Our final speaker uh, in this first panel session is Fabrizio Saccomani from the Bank of Italy. Buongiorno a tutti, eh, signor Sindaco, signor Presidente della Regione, autorità, signore e signori. I'm very happy to be here addressing this uh, conference uh, on uh, Europe's Day. And uh, I think, uh, uh, as other speakers have uh, indicated, uh, this is uh, indeed uh, a challenging moment for, for Europe and for the European institutions. I think uh, uh, I, if I pick up uh, the question uh, raised by Professor Carletti, what kind of uh, union are we going to, uh, are we going to have? I, I will uh, refuse all the three options uh, that uh, she suggested, uh, austerity, transfer, and default. Uh, I mean, particularly the last one sounds like uh, you want to go into an hospital in which you are sure to get sick. So I think that uh, it's, um, it's not a desirable uh, option. I think uh, if I can uh, use some of the words that have already been mentioned, I think uh, the, the kind of union that we would like to have uh, is a union in which there are certainly rules, there is responsibility, solidarity, and in which there is also a clear uh, machinery for uh, growth promotion and for market stabilization. I think if uh, there is a, a sort of a major shortcoming in the European construction, even today, is that uh, it is uh, basically conceived uh, as a, a, a sort of a, an institution in which uh, crises do not occur, or if they do occur, are exclusively the fault of individual countries, and therefore they should be addressed by individual countries with their own means. Now, we know that in the era of uh, financial globalization, this is not true anymore, and therefore, you know, if there is anything that uh, the, where uh, I think the European Union should, uh, should do more is precisely in this area of market stabilization. And uh, I will, uh, I will uh, think, uh, 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 need to explain a little bit what I mean. Uh, certainly, uh, the uh, idea that uh, markets uh, uh, can uh, indeed discipline individual countries and uh, force them to do the right thing. And that, that uh, as uh, my friend Daniel uh, Gross just said, you know, it's only after that the markets have uh, issued their verdict, then the European Union comes in and, uh, and uh, then uh, suggests the inevitable cure is frankly uh, not acceptable. I think um, market discipline has shown to be uh, too little in, 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 uh, in uh, uh, very long periods in which uh, uh, there was plenty of uh, liquidity at uh, low rates, uh, spreads were non-existent. And then, uh, and then the market discipline at some point arrived when it was too late and then it was very sharp. So I think, um, you know, I don't uh, question the need uh, for countries to follow the proper policies and to and to uh, respect the rules of the, of the Union and the rules for, for fiscal <coughs> uh, uh, consolidation and fiscal responsibility. But I do question the fact that, uh, you know, if we want to have a, 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 a European Union that is uh, uh, not uh, vulnerable to crisis, we need to strengthen its ability to, uh, to uh, uh, sort of stabilize, uh, uh, stabilize markets. Uh, I think, uh, as uh, it has been already said by uh, Commissioner Rehn, uh, a lot of things has been done uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the area of the, uh, in strengthening the rules and the, the policy governance in, in, uh, in the European Union, and I will not uh, uh, repeat uh, what has already been said. I think on, on growth uh, uh, promotion, uh, one of the areas that I've indicated, um, I think um, until now, the responsibility for promoting growth has been uh, almost entirely left to national governments. And uh, 
the area, uh, uh, of course, uh, is one in which now, with the, with the crisis, uh, uh, where I think uh, Europe, uh, uh, at the European level, there should be more, more uh, of, a, of a more active role. And I think uh, uh, th there are at least uh, three areas where uh, one uh, should uh, consider a stronger action. I think uh, the uh, strengthening and the broadening of the single market. Uh, this is a, a theme that uh, is uh, very dear to our uh, Prime Minister, Mario Monti, who, who you will uh, uh, see later today. But I think he's absolutely right. You know, there is a, uh, if there is a, a, a chance to revive growth in Europe, uh, I think it comes from the strengthening and the broadening of the, of the, of the single market, particularly in the service area. And also in, in areas uh, uh, like, uh, 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 you know, uh, strategic sectors like the oil, gas, electricity, and, uh, and the information technology. I think uh, in many ways we still live uh, in, uh, in a situation in which we have national monopolies in these areas. And uh, I think uh, the, uh, the uh, idea that uh, we might have uh, a, a truly, uh, a truly a European market for uh, this uh, uh, kind of important uh, uh, commodities like, like oil, gas, uh, electricity, I think is still a, 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 a distant objective. And of course, it requires massive investment, and that's where I think, uh, again, at the European level with the European Investment Bank and the and the uh, sort of the pro proposal for project uh, bonds, uh, uh, I think, uh, can, can uh, again, uh, Europe play an important role. But now let me uh, come to the um, key point uh, of my presentation, which is the how to strengthen the role for market stabilization in the, in the, in the European Union. And I think uh, there's, of course, uh, uh, a, important actions have been taken. We now have, uh, uh, I think, a, a European system of banking and financial supervision. We have a system of uh, uh, monitoring uh, systemic risks, which uh, we didn't have before the crisis. And I think it shows uh, the uh, direction in which, uh, in which uh, European governance is moving. And of course, but we also have the European Central Bank, which uh, I think uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, playing a, a crucial role in this, uh, in this, uh, in this function uh, of market stabilization. Although, again, this is a, a, a function that has been uh, uh, in many ways uh, misunderstood and, uh, and uh, in certain uh, cases has been actually uh, contrasted uh, uh, as, uh, as it was being uh, uh, developed. Um, I think, uh, you know, th there was a lot of the discussion about whether the ECB was uh, indeed able to do uh, unconventional monetary policy measures. And uh, I remember that uh, a lot of commentators felt that this was not uh, possible. I think uh, the uh, ECB has shown that uh, it can do uh, unconventional monetary policy. It will not be a lender of last resort for national uh, governments. Uh, I don't think any central bank in the world uh, is a lender of last resort to governments. Uh, it's uh, a function that uh, is uh, normally played with the financial institutions, with banks, and I think the European Central Bank on this score has done, has done what uh, was needed. But uh, I think uh, uh, while fully respecting the principle of no bailout and the principle of not uh, financing with monetary means the uh, deficits of individual governments, I think the European Central Bank should play a more uh, uh, active role and uh, should be allowed to play a more active role in the field of market stabilization. And the operations that the ECB has conducted over the years, first with the securities market program and then with the long-term refinancing operations, have achieved important results precisely because they have addressed market conditions and market malfunctioning. And um, 
but of course it has not helped the fact that uh, once uh, decisions had been taken uh, to, to do, to allow to, for the European Central Bank to do certain things in this area, then there have been a sort of national, uh, uh, sort of arrière pensée, uh, whether this would, uh, was indeed uh, overstepping the role of the, of, the, of, the, of the European Central Bank and, uh, and, uh, and uh, it was therefore uh, not acceptable or, or almost uh, illegal. Uh, we, we have uh, uh, still, uh, you know, in, <laughs> in, uh, in a number of countries, uh, you know, courts uh, are, are, are still uh, uh, discussing cases on whether certain type of operations uh, conducted by the European Central Bank were indeed within uh, the rule of law. Now, I think uh, this is uh, uh, understandable, but uh, we, uh, if, if we look forward uh, uh, to a, 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 a European Union that is able to deal with crisis, we have to increase the level of flexibility uh, in the use of certain uh, type of instruments. And uh, 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 I think uh, we have done, uh, again, uh, an important contribution by creating a European uh, 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 facility to deal with, with crisis. I, I still think that the rules of engagement of these uh, instruments are too complex, uh, do, are not really uh, immediately usable in time of crisis. Uh, and uh, I think uh, there is uh, always the reference to the fact that uh, we need uh, to, to protect us from the crisis. We need to have uh, firewalls. Now, firewalls uh, do not move, do not act. Uh, they're they're <laughs> solid uh, and, uh, and unmovable things. I think they are important to deal with certain type of uh, uh, fires. But you know what we still also need, I think, is a, a fire brigade, you know, of uh, uh, people <laughs> that can uh, move and act uh, uh, rapidly in the in the in the in the case of crisis. So uh, whether these uh, instruments uh, uh, would be used, as uh, Daniel Grow uh, suggested, to to deal with banking crisis, I think it's a uh, it's a. Uh, it's uh, certainly an open question, and we would uh, would not uh, would not oppose. But uh, I think again, this has to be uh, uh, possible under uh, sort of uh, differentiated uh, uh, rules of engagement, in which the opinion of the. Um, European Banking uh, Authority and of national central banks would be uh, duly taken into account and not only uh, in, a, in a sort of uh, in a, in a, uh, spirit of uh, enforcing uh, uh, strict conditionality which uh, uh, in many ways is, uh, is already applied uh, through other procedures and other rules uh, of, the, of, the, of the European Union. So again, uh, I think uh, uh, we are moving in the right direction. Uh, I think uh, uh, if I think at uh, what uh, the situation was before the crisis in which uh, we uh, in Europe had uh, uh, basically only one uh, institution, the European Central Bank, uh, and, uh, and then uh, uh, a lot of uh, procedural uh, 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 arrangements, mostly of an intergovernmental nature. I think we have moved uh, clearly in the direction of strengthening the rules and institutions of the European Union. But I think we still need, uh, as I said, uh, to uh, endow the European Union of the uh, flexibility and the operational ability to deal with sudden crises, uh, particularly those that uh, are generated by uh, global financial markets. Thank you very much.